Viewer, listener discretion is advised. This particular podcast is going to be extra, extra straightforward and blunt. So, if you have a delicate disposition, I suggest you turn your listening device down now. So that you don't hear any of the harshness. It's about to come. Hello and welcome to For the Quantum Grammar Shoot podcast. The only podcast of its kind on the interwebs that I'm aware of. I'm your host, Colin Jason. I'm Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. In this podcast, I will talk about various topics as viewed through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, the wonderful grammar technology brought to the public by the late Colin David Eifenwing, Colin Miller. All right, folks. So what is the deal? West the deal. What's Gucci? As probably some of you know, I'm still recovering from surgery that I had. Uh, So I have not yet gotten back to workshops yet. But the, I will soon. So those of you waiting on workshops, you will not have to wait much longer. Thank you for your patience. So what I'm going to talk about today is my YouTube channel and what I call trolls. And let's, uh, you know, in, out, in, in, in and above that, let's talk about how people respond to one another, how people react to one another. Yes, folks, I realize I'm using adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble terms. I'm asking that you listen in plain English and think of it. Try your best to cognize what I'm saying, and I will try my best to be as clear and as straightforward as I possibly can so that we do reach a joinder in certification and cognition of what I'm conveying. So I will get folks who come onto my comments field on my YouTube channel, and I, I don't know, you know, they're they're new, right? They don't know the terms and conditions. They don't even think to read the terms and conditions or the community guidelines. It never enters their mind because they're so used to going on any interne- internet platform on any page and just saying whatever the hell they want to whether they're insulting someone, whether they're criticizing someone, or just being ignorant or trying to stir the pot, they're just so used to doing that. And when they come to a channel like mine, which is completely different, I don't know, I don't really know of any YouTube channel that's like mine, as far as the community guidelines go. So when they come with that energy... And depending upon what they're talking about and how they talk about it, I will return that energy, maybe a little bit, maybe equal to what they bring, or maybe I will totally surpass the energy they bring and just basically smash them with, you know, 100% more energy than they brought. It just depends upon who it is and how they approach I mean, it's just like everyday life. You know, some days you you feel good, you feel positive. Other days you may not feel so good. You may not have that much patience. So walking down the street, you may walk, walk by someone and they shoulder check you. 
and call you a wimp or something. And if you're in a good mood, you might just say, oh, excuse me, and then laugh and keep walking. Because, I mean, why, why would you start an altercation or continue an altercation or, or get into that over a word? Words are words, right? But then another day you might be walking down the street and maybe you've just had surgery. Maybe you just got injured. Maybe you're in pain. Maybe one of your home companions, your canine or your feline or whatever, passed away. You're just not in a good mood. You're not in a good headspace. And someone shoulder checks you and calls you a wimp. Now, instead of laughing it off and saying, excuse me, the first response is a straight right hand to the jaw or a left shovel hook to the, to the trachea. I mean, we'll <laughs> or a front kick to the groin. Maybe that's the energy you bring back to that person who just did that. It just depends on the day. Now, the point is, the key is, not the person reacting, but the person who provoked it. Now, as the person who reacted, let's say I'm the person that reacted. It's up to me to be a steward of my actions, of my performances. And so I can only basically perform to the capacity of knowledge or skill or what was the word I'm looking for? Magnanimity. Yeah, I can't think of that word I'm trying to think of right now. Magnanimous, but something else having to do with that. I can only perform to the level of psyche that I am at that day, whether that's positive, negative, good, bad, neutral. I try to be, you know, the three values that I teach, the three principles, balance of honor and grace, possession of peace and neutrality, maintenance of rule, one rule, equal. I try to maintain those at all times. Everyone's human. And so maybe we're not filled up to 100% with those things. Maybe we're only at 50% on this day or even 20% on, on a certain day. Who knows? But I take full accountability for however which way I perform in that scenario. Whether it's I laugh and say excuse me or it's a straight right hand to the jaw. I take full accountability for what I'm doing. Same thing goes for the provocateur, the one that shoulder checked me and called me a wimp. They have to be prepared for the consequences or the possible consequences of their actions, of what they're doing, because they're obviously purposely trying to provoke me. So then when I do turn around and knock them to the ground out cold, with the right hand of the jaw, now they want to cry about it, go to the police, press charges, say I assaulted them, blah, blah, blah. They want to cry about it is the point. When they're the ones that asked for it. Now me, I'm prepared for that because I knew that that was a possibility when I threw the right hand. So if they go crying to the police and press charges and we go through all that, well then, I'll take my lumps. I'll do what I have to do. I'm not going to deny that I did what I did. I'm going to say, yeah, they uh, shoulder checked me, called me a name, so I hit them. Not going to deny it. But then the other person, instead of saying, yeah, yeah, I shoulder checked him really hard and then I called him a wimp. Yeah, I did that. But that doesn't mean he should have punched me. No, they're not going to say that. Instead, what they say is, no, I was just joking. I didn't even, I just barely brushed their shoulder. And I called him a wimp. It was a joke, though. I didn't mean anything by it. I was laughing. There was nothing threatening about it, you know. Jeez, he can't even take a joke. Well, 
that's kind of like how some of these, this is my long winded way of saying, this is how some of these uh, YouTube commenters are. They will come on, they'll be rude. They will be, uh, they'll use ad hominem. They think they're being slick or smart or sarcastic or clever using word games. And then maybe they hit me on a day, one of those days where I just don't feel so well. And I might be a little fed up with people's shit. So I give them back their energy twofold. Then they come back and cry. And they say that I'm bullying them. That that I remind them, this is hilarious too, that I remind them of uh, someone who grew up who was bullied and then joins the police force so that I can bully other people. And so they're basically saying I have a YouTube channel to bully people, which is freaking hilarious. I got some, I got some good laughs out of that, but, uh, that's the thing. Well, what is it with these people that, that get butt hurt? All of a sudden they're child psychologists. <laughs> All of a sudden they have a degree in psychology and they know about my childhood, uh, Whatever. Oh, they also said I never had a girlfriend and, and things like that. And that that's how I'm behaving because I'm bullying them when they're the ones that started it. So basically, what I'm saying is if you want to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, this is not the type of psychology that I would recommend you participate with there is no humility in this and it's a victim psychology you know the old uh the old thing we used to say as children oh they can dish it out but they can't take it definitely true in all of these cases these individuals will come on and dish it out but they can't take it they can't take a criticism the people that learn this grammar are the ones that can take criticism, are the ones that can humble themselves, basically. Um, there's really no other candy-coated way of putting it. You must humble yourself before the knowledge. You must humble yourself before criticism. I had to do the same thing. These were hard lessons for me to learn, to uh, be wrong, but now, now, folks, I am always prepared to be wrong. I'm okay with that. If you think I'm wrong about something, this is how you would do a stop and correct. You would first identify and credential the damage that's being caused by me being wrong. Show me the damages. What is it hurting, whatever I'm doing that you think is wrong? Two, tell me what it is that I'm doing wrong. Tell me what's wrong about it. And number three, offer a solution. Tell me how to correct it. Shh, give me some guidance. That, that's as simple as that. And then we can move on. This has happened multiple times on this channel in the public where folks have pointed out that I made this mistake in a video or that syntax mistake, or that spelling error, or whatever it is. And I'm like, show me where. Give me a link. Give me a timestamp. And they do, if they follow through and they do that, and I see, oh, yeah, you're right. You're exactly right. Sorry about that. I'm wrong. I stop and correct, and then I will usually give them credit as the individual that pointed out to me. And I'll put, publish the correction publicly. That's the other thing about these folks that comment. They don't even use their correct name. No part of their correct name. They don't have a profile picture. They hide behind a nom de guerre. They hide behind no profile picture. Why? In my view, the keyboard warrior is, there, there's a few different types, but they're all basically cowards. They, they can't come into the light. No way would they ever do that. It's like the... Um, 
how shall we say it? The, the individual that always unlevels the geometric level playing field of contract. They don't, just like the fiction, they don't, they will not come up onto fair game land there. They will not come to the geometric level playing field because they know they are wrong. They know they are not correct. They know that they don't possess the knowledge or the fortitude to be able to stand up there with the correct men and women with live life claims that know correct grammar. Or you don't even have to know correct grammar to be able to be fair on a geometric level playing field of contract. Your volition must be correct. And that's why they won't ever do it because their volition is not correct. They know it's not correct. Therefore, they're not going to say who they are. They're not going to show who they are. They're just going to continue to hide and continue to troll. And they probably have fun doing it. Which is cool. You know, I want everybody to have fun. Everybody should have fun. Like my grandfather used to say, we're here for a good time, not for a long time. Only thing is, they're not going to be having fun on my channel because I don't put up with that. And I would just block them. It's no sweat off my brow. And I've actually blocked a few in the last couple months. Every single one of them has no closure on the grammar, not even a rudimentary closure. They have less than zero knowledge about correct sentence structure. So why are they here? Obviously to troll. Uh, I'm sure you folks are probably, maybe, I don't know, if you like to hear personal type of podcasting like this, because I'm, I'm basically speaking about myself here and how I handle things on this channel, as it is my channel. Oh, that's another thing that these individuals think that they're qualified to give advice about YouTube. And then I look at their, their YouTube channel. They have no subscribers, no videos, nothing but yet they're YouTube experts. And it reminds me of the, the folks that will watch a boxing match or a mixed martial arts match. They're sitting outside with their beer and their beer bellies, and they're yelling at the fighters in the cage, get up, hit them, stick and move. They couldn't fight their way out of a wet paper bag. They've never been in a fight. They've never trained a day in their lives. Yet they think they know better than the people that are in there fighting. It's the same thing with these YouTube commenters that do this type of thing. Again, they're just trolls. And a point of contention was uh, one recent troll said to me that I would never talk on the street to someone the way that I speak to people online, which is 100% pure bullshit because years ago when I got closure on this grammar and I began correcting my psychology, my psychological condition of state, the way I looked at things, I made a rule for myself that online, I don't say anything online that I wouldn't say to someone in person in, this, in that situation, that context. If there was a, if we were at a gathering or on the street just talking somewhere and the subject came up, I would say exactly what I would say online. So any YouTube commenters out there that are listening to this, especially the one that said that, I would most definitely say that to your face if I saw you in person, face to face. But I know that that would never happen because you... And you know who I'm talking about, YouTube commenter. The most recent one that I did a, a Kuliana video to, a short Kuliana video to. You know my email address. You don't even have the cojones to email me to do a video consultation to say what you got to say. You, you, don't have, you don't even have the guts to do that. Yeah, I'm talking about, they called themselves Panocha. Or we could call them a suka, a 
however you want to say it. We'll just say troll. Because they don't ever want to be caught out. They don't want to show their face. Cowards. Every one of them. But that's okay too. I mean, not everybody has what it takes to learn this grammar, let alone use this grammar. It takes a special type of disposition. It takes a special type of a psychological mindset to use this grammar and <laughs> getting your panties in a bunch because someone criticized you on the internet is uh, a good indicator that one needs to do some work on themselves before they start even trying to think about learning this grammar to use it under duress. Because being criticized on the internet uh, it does not fall under the heading of under duress. Under duress means you're in a foreign vessel in dry dock. You're being threatened with physical harm by sheriffs or police, Vasilis. That, that's under duress, not this. So if you crack under this, bro... Maybe you just need to concentrate on getting through junior high and then graduating high school. And then maybe you'll grow up a little bit so that you can uh, get off the porch and run with the big dogs, as they say. All right, so this was pretty much just a venting process for me. Um, still recovering, and I will continue to recover and do my best and put out some more content for you hopefully next month we'll get back to some really really sharp grammar content for you i was thinking about just doing uh going through the whole curriculum with new videos and then if i get that set up in place so that it's a more comprehensive cohesiveness to the channel i will start archiving the old videos and maybe delete them entirely and streamline the channel down to about maybe, mm, what do you say, 33 main videos giving closure to the grammar? What do you think about that? Or what about 92 videos? Sort of in honor of Colin David Eiffel and Cole Miller's claim of being a 92nd degree Mason, I'll put up 92 gr grammar videos and take down all the rest. What do you think about that, folks? If you listen this far through, you're still with me, go ahead and give me your suggestions in the comments field. I'd appreciate it. Thanks for listening.